All right, welcome and welcome into uh, episode number 13 of Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. You can see the Ice Devil's here, but there's no Angel. We, we lost her somewhere between Vegas and Utah, I think, this week, but somewhere along the way we'll, we'll round her up. Uh, I know that, that our cameraman's got a rope and he can uh, tie her up and drag her back in, so look forward in the next couple of weeks we'll be... Uh, We'll be back with uh, Hockey Talk, the Angel, and the Ice Devil. So as we get going today, we uh, shooting here live from the uh, Ice Den Chandler, which, uh, as you can see behind me, has a little bit of action going on back there. Um, this time of year, you never know what's going to happen. It's going to be a camp or whatever. But a couple things we want to talk about before the, uh, the segment actually begins today is talk a little bit about the big news with the uh, Arizona Coyotes and the opportunity for them to finally get a head coach. I know... Uh, a lot of people were speculating who it was going to be, when it was going to be announced. Well, guess what, folks? Today it was announced. Somewhere, if you're a very old-time Coyotes fan, you'll know the name of Rick Tockett uh, coming back to uh, sign a four-year deal and, and be the head coach of the Arizona Coyotes. So we want to welcome uh, Rick back to the uh, Desert Southwest, and we know he's going to put on a good show for us. Um, for those of you that don't know, Rick spent the last two years with the Pittsburgh Penguins and uh, captured two Stanley Cups with uh, the Penguins. So... Not only is he a, a great hockey mind, but he's also a great motivator, and I think uh, you're going to find the Arizona Coyotes have got themselves a winner. Uh, so we're real happy to have that. That announcement just came down this week. Also, we want to talk a little bit about schedules, and the uh, Tucson Roadrunners announced their schedule today with the AHL, so they'll be opening up the season on uh, October 7th, Saturday night, down in Tucson at the Tucson Arena, and they'll be hosting the San Diego Gulls. So... If you haven't had a chance to get down and see Roadrunner Hockey, you need to do that. It's an exciting brand of hockey, and I can tell you with the guys that, uh, the prospects that are up with the Coyotes right now that will end up going down to Tucson, it's going to be a fun team to watch this year as well. Of course, we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little NCAA hockey as well, and the, uh, the NCAA men's program over at ASU is, uh, is almost finalized their complete schedule. They know who they're playing. They don't know where all of their games are going to be yet, but... We do know that uh, coming on board is uh, is two very special uh, tournaments this year. Right around the holiday time, they're going to travel to Pittsburgh, play up there in a, in a four-team tournament, and then just before the uh, start of uh, the new year, they'll be in Las Vegas for the uh, Las Vegas Ice Invitational, which is going to be a really good tournament. So keep your eye on the uh, Arizona State Sun Devils. In addition, we also want to welcome to the uh, Ice Time Hockey Southwest family, the Chicago Wolves, which will be the uh, minor league affiliate, the AHL affiliate of the Golden Knights. So we want to make sure that uh, you check out the website and check out the new page going up for the Chicago Wolves as well. And, of course, we always like to uh, give a shout-out to our sponsors. We've got OxyPow on board. We've got Swag Hockey. We've got JPI. And we'll be right back in just a few minutes with our, uh, our first guest, the head coach of the Arizona State women's hockey team, Lindsay Ellis. The Ice Den Scottsdale has always been the coolest place in the desert. Now with the addition of the Ice Den Chandler, our two locations hosting five sheets of ice make the Ice Den your home for youth, travel, and adult hockey leagues. Our nationally recognized Learn to Skate programs offer world-class instruction for skaters of all ages. Our pro shop features equipment and apparel with the top hockey and figure skating brands. 18 Degrees Express with the Chili Bean Cafe make the Ice Den the perfect place to host your next birthday party or special event. Visit us online at coyotesice.com. Hey, welcome back into Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. Tonight's whole night devoted to uh, ASU women's hockey. So glad to have the head coach Lindsay Ellis with us tonight. Thank Lindsay, you. thanks for being here. Thank you. It's a lot of exciting things going on. As you can see, our little display in front showing off a few of the goodies that uh, are coming up for your camps this mm-hmm. month. Yep. So first and foremost, let's talk about the youth camp coming up. Tell me about when it is, how it's going to be, and, and the, the turnout that you're getting right now. Yeah, uh, so the youth camp is July 22nd, 23rd, actually next weekend, and that is at Oceanside Ice Arena. Um, our numbers are crazy for that. We actually have girls flying in for that too, so it's going to be a really good camp. That's uh, that's really nice to have when you're in your second year of a program, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. I mean, the excitement from the younger girls is incredible. So. So did you expect that last year when you were starting? Did you think that it was going to develop this quickly? or Not at all. I mean, I, <laughs> the reason we did this youth camp is because of, you know, the turnout and things that we had at games. So right. we figured, um, you know, we might as well get our girls out in the community and help them out. So, um, you know, this is just the next step. So tell us a little bit about the camp itself. When things get rolling, what's, what's going to happen? What's day one, day two? 
while yeah. they can experience. So each day, it's a full day camp for the younger girls, a little different than in the prospect camp, but the younger girls have a full day. Um, they have two ice sessions each day, um, some off ice, some games here and there, and everything like that. So full and, day. And it's all being done at Oceanside, right? It is, yes. So is there off ice, dry land type thing going on too, or are you strictly yes, on ice? Yes, it is, yeah. No. You have a little oh, everything? Yep. And you're talking girls of what age to what age? It will be our youngest is seven and our oldest is 14. Um, and then moving into prospect camp, it's the older girls. But yeah, it's a huge range for the younger girls. So for your younger camp, obviously you're going to be on the ice, but who else is going to be on the ice instructing for you? Yeah, so it'll be our whole coaching staff. So nice. myself, our new assistant, Katie McGovern, and then Gibber. And then uh, we will have Casey McGinley, uh, Taylor England. And then we'll have Jordan Nash Bolden and Aaron Rawls out with us as oh, well. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about youth camp, I mean, you and I were kind of talking uh, last year about building the program and things like that. And that's really where it starts, isn't it? you got to get them start to uh, take the pitchfork in their hands, so to speak. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, especially having the girls out there with them. I mean, some of the girls are saying that they want to be them someday. So, I mean, it's really helpful to have the girls out there with us as well. So we get into uh, the uh, youth camp, and I know there's some some goodies going as everybody likes to pick up a few yes. things. So, so tell a little bit about what the girls get. I know you're not going to tell me everything because yeah. you guys have some surprises, but what are the girls going to get that come out? Yeah, so both camps will actually get the backpack, but this hat is for the younger girls, and then this hat is for the older girls, and then they'll get a little something else, but I'll keep that a surprise. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your coaching staff with, with Katie. What what she mean to, uh, to bring her back here from a program like UMD? For those that don't know, Katie McGovern's coming back from the University yep. of Minnesota Duluth where she finished up for four years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's huge, especially for me. I've known her for years now, so the, um, and Gibber has two. We actually all played under um, Gail Shalhoub at one point. We weren't in the same age division, but we all played under Gail Shalhoub one year. Okay. So it's kind of cool to have everyone back together and things like that, but it'll be a really good group, and she brings a lot of knowledge and experience in. So she comes back in from an NCAA program back to your ACHA program, so does that mean that she's going to push a little bit more towards the girls to, to, to play more of a higher intensity type? I think so. Um, you know, she's she's seen what it takes to obviously get to the highest level, so I, I think so. So from the youth camp now, the girls that are there are down the road a ways, right? They're, even your oldest girl is going to be a few years away from being on your your team prospectively. But yeah, yeah. What, what do you want to get out of those girls? What do you want to see from those girls? Is there anything that you're looking at right now, at that even at a 14-year-old? I mean, especially for all girls, um, especially in Arizona, I want you know all of them to succeed and play college hockey, whether that be at ASU or elsewhere. So um, I really want to push them and make them see like that that dream is possible. Let's talk about ASU a little bit too, as far as what's going on over there. Things things going your way as far as getting ice time and all that good stuff. So the university is behind you guys and giving you some good support. Yes, they are. Yes. Awesome. Now we talk about Oceanside. I know I see some pictures where they've done some revamping to the ice and they're just putting it back in. So yep. you guys are going to see a little better ice hopefully yes, when, uh, yep. when you get back out. <laughs> it'll be a little hotter outside, so it'll be <laughs> nice to come in the cold. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with uh, another segment here with Lindsay and we'll talk a little bit more about Prospect Camp. Hello, everybody. It's uh, the Ice Devil back again, uh, representing with our, uh, our good friends from Oxypal with all the, uh, the different uh, odor sprays that they have and the, uh, you see the hand soap that they have, everything that wants to eliminate odors the right way. So if you get a chance, get on over to oxypow.com, take a look at some of their products. Uh, been an awesome sponsor for us. We're happy to have them on board with us. And like I said, if you haven't tried their products yet, you need to. It does an excellent job of uh, taking care of everything. And as they like to say, get the funk out, well, it definitely gets the funk out. So once again, that's oxypow.com. All right, and we're back with another segment with um, ASU women's head coach, Lindsay Ellis, here on Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. So, Lindsay, we talked about your youth camp first. Let's talk a little bit about the prospect camp and how things are looking for uh, the girls that you're actually going to have on the ice this fall. Yeah, uh, so our prospect camp is July 29th and 30th. Uh, that's also at Oceanside. Um, and that has, you know, current players that has future commits that we already have for right. the 2018-2019 year um, and then all those prospects coming in so it is a good group. So when that group of girls comes in how many are we talking about right now? What do you think you're going to have on the ice? Um, 
hard to say right now because we still have registrations coming in and they still have three weeks to register, but right. uh, last year we had 31, so okay. we're thinking the same number. And we talked a little earlier about they're usually the ones to late register. They, they come they in are. at the last minute, right? They are. We actually had 15 register the week of camp last year, so it'll probably be the same this year. Imagine that college kids yep. getting in at the last second. <laughs> yep. So that ends at the end of July, mm -hmm. and then when do the girls come in for classes? When do the classes Yeah, again? so they start um, about a week, or excuse me, two and a half weeks into August. They okay. start school, so they get a week to settle into class, and then we start on August 22nd. And your practices again this year are going to run the mornings, I'm guessing? Yes, they are. <laughs> so you get your early morning stuff in yep, early? Yep. <laughs> early mornings. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about um, what you expect out of this group now that you've had a year under your belt to kind of see how, our, how it all flows. Mm -hmm. What do you expect from this group coming in? I think it'll be a really good group. I mean, obviously last year we were really young. Yeah. So now they know what to expect. They have their feet under them, and now they can guide the new girls coming in. So I think it'll be a really good year for them. So you get on the ice in August, and then you start playing your first game, what, mid to late September? September 22nd. We uh, open up against GCU. Okay, yep. and that's at Oceanside, right? It is, yes. Two-game series? Yep. So you get out there a little bit ahead of the uh, the, the NCAA guys, and we they do. come in yep. in October. So, yep. so how important is it for your girls to get on the ice and get competitive right away? It's very important. You know, I know a lot of them right now are doing things off the ice to better themselves and, you know, right when we get on the ice in August is when we come together as a group. Tell people what it's going to be like to actually not have to get on the road right away and travel. You're going to have some home games and some competition. Yeah. What's that going to mean to the program and for you guys? It's a little bit of a luxury for us this year, not having to travel all the time. Um, and so it'll be nice to, you know, have a routine at home and build that home base for them because we really didn't have that last year. <laughs> right. So let's talk about the strength of this of this team coming up. Where, where's the strength going to be? Goaltending, defense, offense? Where do you think you're going to be? Honestly, I, we're building strength in all areas right. um, you know Jordan and um, Bree are still going to be our goaltenders right um, and then we're bringing in some more D and more forwards as well so we're just adding more depth to the program and that was the key last year wasn't it depth you, you really yes. struggled to find a lot <laughs> yes. of girls that to, to be able to just feel the roster at some point mm -hmm. wasn't it yes definitely. so those those things are starting to make things a little bit easier I'm guessing on your part so yeah. We talked a little bit about your, your staff, but let's talk a little bit about Gilbert and what she means to your program as far as being a goaltending coach. Yeah. Tell me she, a little bit about her and, and her things that she does for you. Yeah, I mean, she I mean she obviously helps us on the bench as well um, with defense, but, you know, she knows everything about goaltending pretty much. So, um, you know, when things are going on in the game, she has, you know, I like looking at her notes during games. She knows where every single shot was taken during a game, and that's right. how she helps our goaltenders during games. And then we work on that in practice and see where shots need to come from and what needs to be worked on. So for those that don't know, it just flows off of my tongue too to say give her, but <laughs> yep. tell, tell us who she really is. Yes, her, <laughs> her, her formal name is Kaylee Marino, um, former maiden name Gibson, so that's where Giver comes from. <laughs> and her dad's pretty good at goaltending and, yes. and instructing goaltending yep. as well, isn't he? He is, yes. For those that don't know, Larry Gibson is uh, is uh, Kaylee's father, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So you've had her around you for, for a little while now, so you're comfortable mm -hmm. with her, and now let's talk specifically about Katie McGovern and what she's going to bring. We talked about her earlier in the segment, but tell me a little bit about some of the things that she's going to bring to your program. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's experience. Um, you know, you have to know to be able to show the girls, I guess I could say, but, um, you know, she has that knowledge of where you need to be on the ice and when you need to be there and right. things like that, and she can really push them to that level. So for her playing at the NCAA level at UMD, they, they play pretty well, right? They, yes. <laughs> they went after some championships yep. and things like that. So specifically, is there any one thing that you think she's going to bring to your program that you might not have had without her? Um, honestly, I would say probably that determination, um, right. that higher level of determination. You know, right now it's... Um, you know, we were a young team and we didn't exactly know what to push for. Now that we've seen it and with her coming in and pushing them even further, you know, I think they can push themselves to a whole other level that we haven't seen yet. And now that we're, what, 60 days away from the first game, roughly, or yeah, thereabouts? Yeah, we're tell, close. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about that schedule and how it, how it kind of flows. You guys have GCU uh, mm -hmm. at home first. 
and then what happens the rest of the way? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're mostly home in October. Um, we're playing CSU and CU, um, and we're actually hosting our annual breast cancer awareness game again, as okay. well against CSU. Um, and then in November, we go to Colorado for a showcase there. Um, and then we play Midland at home before okay. Thanksgiving, and that's where we're hosting our first military appreciation night. Uh, so I saw the jerseys. We are very excited about that one. Um, nice. And then we'll end the semester against GCU again at Peoria. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when your games are at Oceanside, are they tied in with, with men's games too around them? A or little no? bit, a little okay. bit. So um, there's a few games we play after the ACHA programs, um, right. and then there's a few that we play after the NCAA. Okay. So it's pretty cool for the girls as well to see that level of play for the boys. And I know last year being out of your games, there were a lot of the ACHA boys and even the NCAA boys that wanted to come out and watch you guys play, weren't they? Yes, sir. Um, I mean, we're all very supportive of each other, and all of us coaches um, have a good relationship as well so all the teams are very very supportive of each other so we talked about being pretty level across the board is where you're improving that but throw some names out there that people are going to watch this year that are coming out that weren't there last year yeah um, one of our uh, big d players coming in is lauren power uh, she is an arizona native but she played uh, in colorado actually but she uh, will be a big d and help us out there um, you know obviously we only had three d last year we had to move some forwards back so uh, that's going to help us out a lot. And then we actually have a, quite a few forwards to watch out there. And uh, we have a girl coming from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Her name okay. is Aubrey Buskin. Um, so that's another girl that we're going to be able to watch. So when you're out looking for girls, looking for prospects, what are they saying about ASU? What are you hearing out there? <laughs> Honestly, it's, a lot of people don't know about it yet. Right. Um, I went to a camp in Denver a few okay. weeks ago, and you know I was on the ice, and a few girls skated up, and were like, Arizona State, really? So, you know, we're still getting the word out there, but it's really cool to see that that many people have interest in Talk a little bit about the fundraising part of it. We all know what ACHA means, fundraising, and I know that's a big part of your job as yep. well. So how are those fundraising efforts going, and any shout-outs you want to give to people that have helped the program out at this point, and let people know how they can help you out? Yeah, so um, a few donors that we have had, um, obviously Behind the Mask helps us out tremendously with every piece of gear that anyone's ever wearing. Right. So <laughs> thanks to them for that. Um, we have a few private donors that have helped us out with equipment and things like that. Um, and then, most honestly, most of them have been private donors. Okay. So thank you to them that don't want to be named. But uh, other than that, to help us out, you can actually contact me directly. Uh, my email is on our website, and you know you can become an official sponsor or buy certain equipment for our team and things like that. But um, other than that, you know we appreciate anything. So. So, so for those that want to get on board the, the Sun Devil women's hockey program mm -hmm. and, and they're looking at a hat like, I'm already looking at that hat of yours, yep. so I'm like, i got to have one like that. <laughs> how, how do people get some, some merchandise that they want to purchase? Yeah, so we've actually started adding a lot of things to our website. Okay. Um, so a lot of things will be on our website after Prospect Camp. Actually, this hat and this hat are on the website right now. Okay. Um, and then we will be adding a few more things as we go on. And then let's finish up with, uh, tell us what you're doing. I know you told me you had to get out because you got a men's league game tonight, but <laughs> tell me what you've been doing this summer. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been doing quite a few camps. I'm actually doing a camp this week at oh, yeah. Peoria, yep, uh, at the Elite Hockey Camp run okay. by Zach Bear. So I'm um, doing that camp this week. I was at the College Hockey Showcases camp uh, a few weeks ago in Denver. Um, that was really cool to be able to coach along some NCAA D1 coaches. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm preparing for the season. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some exciting news going on around the board with uh, the Coyotes hiring Rick Tockett. So mm -hmm. give me some thoughts on, on Rick Tockett coming in. What do you think? I mean, I think it's really cool. I mean, I grew up going to America West Arena, you know, right. when he was on the team. So it's pretty cool to have him back. Kind of nice. And the Coyotes, which made news early with, with all the, I guess you call it negative things, with Shane mm -hmm. Doan going and Coach Jimmy mm -hmm. going. But they've, they've rebounded pretty well, I think, in the last couple of weeks. I do. I think they're really building a program for a championship and yeah. not, you know. And, and tell people out there exactly how important having in not only NCAA hockey, but NHL hockey is to your program. Mm -hmm. And you, you need that, don't you? I mean, yeah, it's a base, right? Definitely. I mean, I think. Mostly everyone in Arizona has started hockey because of the Coyotes, and now they can say they're starting it because of the Sun Devils. Right. So it's really cool to see that. Well, Lindsay, I certainly appreciate you coming in and, and talking uh, ASU women's hockey. Of course, you know we'll be out there supporting and, and covering you all through the season. Thank so you. we'll get one more shot to, uh, to, to get a 
a little more talking with you when you get on the prospect camp going. So we'll see what you got on the ice. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Have Thank a good you. rest of the summer. Thank you. And we'll be right back with another epi- another edition of Hockey Talk with Angel on the Ice Tilt. Crime can happen to anyone at any time. Be a role model for the next generation. Become empowered. This is true life insurance. All right, and we're back with uh, a wrap up of another great episode, episode 13 of Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. Great show tonight, we're devoted to um, majority of it to ASU women's hockey. It was a great opportunity to bring Lindsay Ellis, the head coach, in and uh, talk a little bit about her program. She's got two great camps coming up, as she spoke about. She's got a youth camp coming up here in uh, just a couple of weeks. And then, of course, her prospect camp will be coming up the end of July, where she'll have a chance to see some of her new prospects for not only this season, but the next season as well. So uh, stay with our website, icetimehockeysw.com, so you can get out and visit. Uh, all of the stuff that we put up for them as well we want to touch on uh, like i said the fact that we have a new coach here at a, at uh, the arizona coyotes which is great having rick talk it back so again welcome rick back to the desert southwest and uh, as the month of july starts to wind down we're just uh, about a month away from school again and the teams will be starting to hit some ice time and, and get back into the practice swing of things so next week we hope to have uh, Coach Powers back with us with the uh, Arizona State Sun Devils. I know he's been uh, out recruiting for about the last two and a half months, and says he's finally going to be back here next weekend, next week. So we'll look to have Coach Powers in in uh, house with us. Also, want to thank Lindsay Ellis for coming out next week. She's going to send her newest assistant, Katie McGovern, to us. So we'll be back here at the Ice Den Chandler. We want to thank them as always for the great job they do at uh, hosting us. So next Tuesday night, we'll be back here. If you want to come on out and see the show live, we're more than welcome to have you. Um, For today's show, we want to thank Lindsay, of course, for being here. We want to thank our uh, hosts at the Ice Den, uh, Chandler. We're going to thank our sponsor, Swag Hockey. We're going to also thank uh, OxyPal and uh, our friends at JPI. So um, for our behind-the-staff crew, we have our cameraman, Robert Schneidmiller. We have our executive crew, Terry Strandy. And we... uh, we're going to wrap it up for another week, and we'll see you next week on Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. So for all of us here at Ice Time Hockey Southwest, that's a wrap.